It is a hobby that takes immense skill of demonstration of control, finesse, working with or against the wind sometimes. We're talking about remote control airplanes. Every weekend, hobbyists practice to keep their skills sharp, even having some childlike <laughs> fun high above 21 country. I started flying airplanes when I was 14 and then, you know, life progresses and, you know, you get married and, you know, so I finally came back to it once, you know, the kids have grown up and moved on, so it gave me more free time. You can easily find your niche. I mean, some people just like flying the small little foamies. Some people like, you know, growing up into bigger, more expensive airplanes. And you could start this hobby for 120 to, uh, you know, $250 gives you a perfect trainer that you could fly with an instructor and build confidence easily. I've had an interest in aviation since the fourth grade. I'm a full-scale pilot too, so I fly real airplanes, and this is a way to do it a lot cheaper and uh, with the more people around to enjoy the hobby with. Some people say uh, that remote control is harder because you're not setting in it, so whenever the plane turns back at you, everything's opposite. So when, if you're setting in it, you can feel that. You don't have to think about it being opposite controls when it's coming at you. So in some ways, flying a real airplane, or full-scale as we call it, is easier uh, than remote control. I mainly fly in EDF jets and we do a lot of bloody baron fighter uh, fighter plane. Okay. It started out we're just going to cut ribbons off and then, and then it's kind of like well if you crash it's kind of a wow factor. I'll bet you that battery's not any good. <laughs> <laughs> this one as you can see has been uh, crashed a number of times and has been pieced back together. The last flight I had a gentleman decided to take out part of my wing and part of my rudder and it was uh, still up the air flying. Oh! They're made of foam. They're pretty inexpensive and if you tear them up you can take the parts off of one and put it back on another and continue the battle. And if somebody takes somebody else out they, uh, they put a target on them. So I've got my eyes on about two or three guys. We always uh, encourage everybody we push everybody to fly better learn new maneuvers we all love our inner childhood and we uh, enjoy this so much that you know if there's an opening we're going to fly and and that's the cool thing about this is the forecast today looked very glim until 10 o'clock and by now there's over 60 cars in our parking lot i'm one of two people in the club that that are actually building and flying 3D printed planes. I have a couple planes that'll do over 100 miles an hour that are 3D printed. Um, so there's really no limit with the exception of heat. Uh, you leave a plane in a car on a, on a warm day, it will melt the plane down. So you have to be real careful about you know, the temperature and where you keep your planes. And they're definitely not made for impact. When you, when you land hard, or other words, crash, it's pretty much time to reprint. Uh, but that's no big deal because it's not like you're doing much work. I will warn you, it is very addicting. Before you know it, you'll start out with one or two planes, or like myself, might end up with about 50. Just a good camaraderie of, of people, young and old. 50 planes. You're going to get some ideas Can here. we Can we get a couple? We'll limit oh, to like boy. two or three. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, newcomers have to become a member of the club and demonstrate the ability to fly well. If you need practice, it's not unlike driver's training. If your flight starts to go bad, an instructor takes over uh, and controls the plane to keep it uh, away from crashing into people. You can find more information on the Fort Wayne Flying Circuits. Love that name. At WPTA21.com. Daniel Beals. Produce that piece, by the way.